So I think this happened during um, senior year in high school because I just came out of another disorder and I think once I came out of it, I realized something else was wrong. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, I'm still eating fine and things are okay, but I don't feel good anymore. I feel tired all the time, friends are too much, or I'm irritable. So I was like, what's going on? Like, and I would scream all the time. And there was a lot of anger going out. Like I would throw things around. And at one point, I think some things went really bad in a, con like in a sequence. And I just snapped. Like I felt like I couldn't breathe anymore. I was like, I'm stuck in this loop forever. Like, you know, like it was prison, but at home. And I remember I kind of just ran out of home. I like, I opened the door and just ran out. And I think my mom chased after me. And she's like, come back, where are you off to? And I'm like, I don't know, leave me alone. And she's like, no, so it's at, it's at night. So I'm running and running and then she's trying to catch up. Finally, I stop, I'm like, okay, poor thing, you know? And I guess she's like, what's going on? Like, talk to me about it. And I told her, I'm like, it seems like nothing's getting better. I've been stuck in the same mental state for the past few years. Like first the eating disorder and now this. I'm like, does it ever get better? Because I'm kind of tired at this point. School's too much, friends too much, basketball's, like it's, it's a lot going on. And it's just not ending. And she was just like, you only have one year left. <laughs> You'll be done with school then. You go to college and you want to go to California. So what's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. It seems pointless. Like, I don't want to do it. I just want to go and sleep. In the beginning, it would just be like, I was like low, mood down, but it wasn't to the point where I didn't feel happiness. I was just like, I would still enjoy it. Gradually, like once like school ended, and once I came to college actually, I started not wanting to do anything. I felt things got progressively worse in freshman winter quarter. That's when I think I isolated myself, and I completely went out of um, the social circle. I would just sit in my room, and um, my roommates were there. With them, I would interact a bit here and there, but I wouldn't feel good at all. It would be like, I stopped going to the gym, I stopped going out to meet friends, I stopped going to parties. Um, I didn't show up for class for weeks. I would just sit at home. I would just watch podcasts because I have to, like, you know, pass. But there was no, like, physical presence anywhere else. And at that same time, I started expect, uh, experiencing more anxiety and, like, depression was there, but the heart racing became worse. It was like, I need to calm down, like, I don't like it anymore. When I am feeling like really anxious, the thoughts are like, I can't do anything right. I'm gonna try to do it, but it won't be right. Or like, I'm gonna get sick. I don't know why I kept thinking, if I exert even a little bit, I'm gonna throw up or something like that. Because that's feeling my stomach all the time. I felt physically sick. So I'm like, I can't go out, I'm sick. I'm physically like sick. But I think I was just overthinking. And um, with friends, it was also, it would be like, I don't feel like going out today because I don't feel good. Like my hair is being this, my hair is being that, but I would make it like 10 times worse in my head. Or I would be like, I have so many assignments I haven't done. Like what makes me think I should go out instead? Like I should be doing that. And then when I sit at home, I can't even do that anymore. It's like, you're paralyzed, kind of, and you know what to do. And I just kept sleeping. At one point, I couldn't even sleep. Like I would sleep a lot for a couple of weeks. And then I think anxiety got even worse to the point where, you know, we have insomnia at night, you keep shaking in bed because your heart races so fast, like you can't sleep. It's like when you have a test the next day, you know, when you're like so nervous, you're like, ah, oh, get it over with. That kind of a feeling. But that stayed like for weeks again. So I don't know what triggered it exactly, but it just keeps coming and going, like in waves. I think like when I don't have enough strength in me, I give in and then I spiral down. And then I reach rock bottom and then I realize, oh no. Like, then I have to come back up. And it's become a process, like a cycle, which I'm trying to break, but it's kind of not working out that well right now. So I did have people to talk to, but the thing is, you know, when you're kind of anxious or depressed or something, anything someone else says doesn't make any sense. You just say, you, you're like, yeah, I know you're like talking to me, trying to console me, but this is not what, like, you know, it's not helping. So I would talk to people, but I would be frustrated and be like, why are you trying to give me advice? Like, how do you know what's going on? So I would turn into anger against them for no reason, especially like my parents, because others, like, I wouldn't do that because 
I don't want to hurt them. Parents are like, you know, <laughs> they're your parents. So I would give them a lot. And yeah, I had people to talk to, but I wasn't great at it. I didn't like see like a therapist and stuff. So I would talk to her and that would be good. But then once that was over, we're back in the same thing again. I have to push myself, honestly. Like, I don't do the alarms thing, the treating myself thing. I have to keep setting that or give myself a, do, a dead end. Like, okay, this weekend is left. After this weekend, just try to go for one class tomorrow. Just one class. You know, that's the only thing you have to do for the day. You have no other agenda. You sleep in the class, it's fine. Just go for that class. Because I know myself, I won't sleep in class. But like, you know, at least the fact that I said, it's okay if you sleep. So I do that. I set really small things for myself. Because that's what my parents did for me when I was in my senior year in high school. I started skipping exams because I wasn't able to study. I had no concentration, no focus. I would just get sick, I would cry. So I think one day my dad, he did kick me out of the house. Like he took my bag and threw it out and he pushed me out. But he's like, even if you fake puke in the exam hall to get out, I'll come pick you up. Just go. You can pretend to faint also, it's okay. Like I just want to go sit in the exam room. Just go sit there. You want to give an empty paper, give an empty paper and come back. Just go there and sit down. You say you feel sick, I will come that minute pick you up. Just go, please. I'm crying and I'm like, why would he do this to me? Oh my God, what a father. He threw me out of the hole. He, I was really upset. I'm crying the whole way to school. I'm crying in the exam hall. But see, when you see an exam paper, of course you won't leave it empty. Like at that moment, I was like, let's try something. Something, you know, like put some answers in from what you remember. Yeah, I got like a 75, which is pretty good for that time. So I was like, oh, oh, interesting. So then he's like, yeah, you have no confidence in yourself. Like, see, all you gotta do is go and show up. Don't study, it's fine, just show up, you know something. So I took that in mind, that's what I'm starting to do now, just showing up to things. Um, cut the people out who cause anxiety in the first place. Anyone's causing anxiety, get them out of your life. It's not worth it, this is not high school anymore, you don't need them. I had a lot of problems with that. I'm like, why am I dealing with other people's crap? Like, honestly, I don't need this in my life. You're giving me anxiety now and I'm getting very un uneasy. Like, these are not even normal problems. If you have an issue, sort it out. Otherwise, just keep them away. You don't need it. You're gonna have other people for you. That was one of my main things. Like, I don't want toxic people around me, kind of. Or people who judge a lot, like, because then you can't be yourself and you're always thinking, what should I do? Should I do this? Should I do that? And it's just the constant whirlwind. And the other thing is, it's never the end. Like, no matter how low you go, you can get better, honestly. It's just whether you have the strength to like start making small changes to go up the ladder and cause a difference. It's like, I remember when I was really anxious, I couldn't even brush my teeth. I couldn't even go take a shower. It was like, I was stuck. I was, I don't know why, it's like that caused me fear, like just brushing my teeth. Who, who's going to brush their teeth? But then I was just like, I would keep t um, timers or alarms and I'm like, I would re reward myself. Like if you go brush your teeth, you can do this. Or like, you know, set kind of little tasks and targets and slowly sort of bring it back, no, bring it back up. No one's saying like, you know, within a day it'll be fine. Or like within a day everything's going to go set themselves up. Just keep trying and trying and you will get better than what you were before. And if not, nothing's going to worse anyway, is it? <laughs> like, it's not going to get any worse. So trying isn't going to like destroy anything. It's either gets better or stays the same. It's really no loss in that way. It's a win-win. So yeah. For me, it's more like, there are things I still want to do. They're really childish things. It's not like a big goals, but it's like, I want to travel, I want to see more places, like I would like to, um, I don't know, do things more like go scuba diving, go like sky, I, I want to do like things and if I stay the way I am right now, I'm not going to be able to do those things. Like I made a bucket list for myself, I've got to finish that off, that's something, it's my personal thing. Or um, for somebody it could be like they haven't made the impact in the world yet, I don't know, like for me it's just that I still have things I want to do and I haven't done yet. Probably when those things are done, we'll think about it later. But I still want to do those things, like, you know, short term. Like, or I remember once I'm like, I still haven't got a tattoo yet. Like, I can't, you know, go off like that. Where's my tattoo at? So uh, things like that keep me going. Like, I'll set a thing, like, on my 21st, I want this. So I keep working until my 21st. Then that's another thing. Like, on my 22nd, I want this. So it's like pushing year by year by putting some activity or something exciting. 
which will like keep me going. Mm. I don't think too much about the end result yeah. because that scares the hell out of me. I used to be a perfectionist, like everything had to be perfect and that didn't work well. Because things aren't perfect, you can't do it to the T, you know, especially when there's so many things going on. So now it's just like put in the effort, do whatever you can, if you can't, you can't. Honestly, it's fine. I did feel a like class in spring quarter, but I was like, it's okay. We can retake it next spring, we'll go for summer session, like we'll make up, you know. GPA went down, it's okay, once the class comes back in, the F will go, your GPA will rise, it is fine. So it's kind of like telling yourself this isn't the end. Like there are so many other options. Okay, degrees didn't work out. Go work in a farm or in a zoo. You still work, honestly. <laughs> it's not like it's the end. That's my backup. Go work in a zoo if nothing works out. So yeah, I've kept like backups in place for myself in case things don't go according to plan. I have that still there.